Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm just going to be going over a few things that I would never do to my hair as a hairdresser. I feel like sometimes hairdressers, the advice that they give out isn't always the advice that they would follow. So yeah, hairdressers are not going to like this one, but it's the truth, okay? So thing number one that I just wouldn't do as a hairdresser I don't think that you need to cut your hair every six weeks. If you've got like a really short style that requires like, you know, you need to cut it every six weeks because otherwise it's going to fall flat or you don't like the way that your hair looks after six weeks of not cutting it. So you're choosing to cut your hair every six weeks because you want it to look a certain way. That's different, but I don't think that you need to cut it every six weeks for growth. Um, my hair at the moment could use a cut and I don't want that to discredit what I'm saying if you're thinking like babe your hair needs a haircut like I I know okay I'm ge I'm getting to it <laughs> I'm getting to it but it's actually been months since I cut my hair um I'm gonna have to like find out when I actually cut my hair but I'll put it here I think it must be like minimum three months ago I just don't think every six weeks is necessary I feel like it's a lie that hair just to tell you so that you come back to the salon more frequently all right I wouldn't do it. You don't need to do it. And I feel like I'm qualified to say that because whenever girls with really, really long, luscious hair would come into my salon, <laughs> my salon, the salon that I worked at, I would make it a point to be like, basically getting tips from them. Cause I'm like, your hair is amazing. So I'd be trying to like, you know, like drop it into conversation. Like, what is your hair care routine? <laughs> Joking. But I'd be like, how often do you cut your hair? And I'm not asking because I'm like, oh, so when was your last car? I'm literally like, how often was it? Like, how often do you actually do it? And I swear to God, the girls with the longest, most beautiful hair are always the ones that are like, um, a, twice a year? And I'm like, of course it's twice a year because it's a lie. Your hair will not grow fast enough for you to cut it every six weeks and see growth. I just don't believe it. Unless you've got really, really damaged hair and the hairdresser's trying to like... She basically wants you to cut this much off because all of this is dead and she's being polite. So she's like, let's just trim it or he. So they're like, oh, let's just cut it. Like, you know, come back every six weeks because they're just trying to get rid of all of the dead. That could be the case. But I personally just feel like we are taught it like it's a fact. Like the hairdressing course that you do. <laughs> like, it's like, how should you cut hair every six weeks? It's just stupid and it's a lie. That's my opinion. The next thing that I would never do as a hairdresser is I would never use sun in or henna on my hair. Um, sun in is the spray that you spray into your hair in the sun and it gives you like natural highlights. I would never use that on my hair because I, I personally think it would look patchy. Like I just can't imagine that it would look anything like the adverts that you see where they've literally got like a perfect balayage in the end. And it's like, did you use sun in or like, is that a lie? I wouldn't use it. I think it would look patchy. Surely, like, if you just sprayed it on a patch, that patch would go, like, I just, I don't buy it. I don't trust it. And also, if you ever wanted to get your hair actually highlighted, you can't. Any hairdresser would just be like, no. If you've had sun in, like, recently enough that you haven't, like, grown it out and it's cut off, it messes with the bleach and your hair is just so likely to react and frizzle away that most hairdressers wouldn't do it i wouldn't do it if someone told me that they'd like had sun in in the summer and then they wanted me to give them a balayage i would just be like no <laughs> i just wouldn't do it same thing with henna i know that like lots of people do like using henna and i would say that that's fine if you know for certain that you never want to go blonde it's even kind of risky mixing henna with regular hair dyes even like dyeing it dark if someone told me that they usually they like often used henna I would have to kind of like reassess if I'm actually going to dye their hair and it would I would have to completely like rethink my plan on what, what I thought we were going to be doing with the hair if they were like oh yeah I usually dye my hair with henna that just changes everything because henna also reacts with a lot of colour particularly bleach um so that's just something to consider if you ever think you want to get your hair done professionally I would avoid henna that leads me on to my next point which is I would never in a million years ever lie to my hairdresser about what previous things I'd done to my hair I feel like people are embarrassed or people have researched it and they're like oh no like if I tell the hairdresser that I've used sun in she won't bleach it but that's actually really mean because then like the hairdresser is gonna do it and then 
your hair will break. Like, we're not just like, it's not just like a lie for no reason. It's like, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't bleach your hair if you've had sun in. So your hair will break. You'll be upset. The hairdresser will be upset. It looks bad on the hairdresser. Like, even though the manager is going to know, like, oh, that girl didn't tell her, it still just looks bad. Like, it will be like a thing that that hairdresser will remember. Like, oh, that time I burnt that girl's hair off. You know? I would just never do that. You know, I think the worst that someone's going to say, if it's like, oh, I've used sun in, it's like, all right, well, just come back when that's grown out. It's not like you can never dye your hair blonde again. It's just that that hair needs to go away. So just be honest. Yeah. Sometimes people lie about weird stuff as well. Like, I'll be like bleaching someone's hair. We've just had a whole conversation about like, oh, no, they, they've never dyed their hair before. And then I'm bleaching it. And it's really obvious because as the bleach like lifts out, you can sometimes just see basically like bands of colour underneath the hair. Like, I, why did you lie? You know what I mean? Because now, yeah, like if I was going to, if I had like somebody with virgin hair, like virgin brown hair, and then I was going to bleach it and they just wanted like a sun-kissed balayage, I might go in with like a 20 vol and in my head i'm planning like that doesn't need that long because it's her first time it's gonna lift really clean like it's this is gonna be easy and then so you use like a week of bleach and then they, and say you offer them a treatment and they're like nah i don't really fancy one and you're like oh, you know what they're not cheap you know if you don't have the budget for a treatment at the moment it's the first time you've ever done bleach i'm just gonna go slow and steady with a nice slow um with a nice weak oxidant and then it starts lifting like literally like blue and green and there's like all of these colors emerging underneath i would have probably said you need a treatment <laughs> you need a treatment if you've previously done x y and z to your hair and now you've dyed it black and now you want me to dye it into a nice ashy caramel like we need to get your expectations back where they should be and realistically what i'm going to need to do is probably use a slightly stronger bleach with a treatment like olaplex and cut through some of the layers of color that are going to be underneath this top layer that you've done recently and then i can like give you the goal that you want you know we we can get there but not if i don't know because now i've used a weak bleach and you haven't got a treatment in your hair and it's weird it's like a murky color realistically i'm just gonna have to tone it pretty dark to cover any of this up and that's like why you know what i mean why the next thing that i would never do is i would never box dye my hair as a hairdresser um even if i was just gonna dye my hair brown dyeing your hair brown or black black is definitely the easiest because it's kind of like there aren't like varying degrees like there aren't like lots of different shades of black and i know you can have like a warm black or a cool black but they're kind of ultimately black browns are a bit more specific like but even still i even i wouldn't even dye my hair black or brown with a box dye because the quality just isn't there and it's not that much cheaper sorry if you just researched like professional colors you don't need to spend that much more. All you need is like a big bottle of Oxidant. You can literally get everything on Amazon. The brand that I use the most is L'Oreal. So the professional colour that I use is called L'Oreal Dia Rich S. And that's like good for all over colour. I would just always use professional colour. I don't think I'm supposed to like actually recommend that officially. So like this isn't an official recommendation. This is just what I do. Um, but I personally would just order professional colour online and just like watch some youtube videos you know find out what the hairdressers are using and uh, and i personally would just go and order that <laughs> for myself because a box dye is just trash <clears throat> it's not going to last as long it's going to probably wash out a crap colour and it's going to be more damaging especially bleach because it's kind of like a one size fits all so what you'll find is like you've got 10 volt 20 volt 30 volt or 40 volt that's generally what people hairdressers will use um it might be that you only need like 20 vol your hair might lift really nice and actually maybe you've already got kind of like mousy brown hair and you just want it to be blonde not much happening you don't need 40 vol 
but because it's a one size fits all, they don't want people with black hair to complain that it barely did anything. So then nearly always box dyes have the strongest bleaches. And so if you don't need that, it's just damaged for no reason. Also, most of them box dyes, they just tell you to like dye your hair and it has some kind of tone on it. Like it will say like ash blonde or like honey blonde. The thing with bleach is that it just lifts your hair. Like it just strips out the pigment that's already in there. It's not gonna also deposit a tone. So when you dye your hair in a salon, it's like a two part process, which I feel like everyone knows at this point, like you bleach your hair to get it to the color that you need it to be. And then you have to tone it to the, to the shade that you want it to be, whether that's warm or cool. Um, but it's quite like advanced hair technology to lift and then deposit. And there are professional colors that do that, but they even make professionals nervous. Like I don't really like using them because they kind of stress me out. It's like, please do the right thing, please. But you know, definitely, definitely not for 6 99 from like Tesco. You know, it's just not, it's just not gonna work. Um, but having said that, I also then wouldn't buy like a silver toner from Superdrug. I wouldn't like buy a box dye and then buy a silver toner. Silver toners are never good. If I put silver on my hair right now, my hair looks like it's all one colour, but it's not. Some areas bleached more than other areas. I've like toned everything strategically to make it all seem like one nice uniform cohesive colour but if you just like bleach if I were to put like a, a cheap silver toner all over this probably my ends would just go really silver and nothing would happen to the rest of my hair and the silver would probably be kind of like dark almost like grey and just not good I would never buy a silver toner I would again me I personally would look online and find out like what the exact shade that I want is called then I'd find out a brand that I want to use and then I would see what that colour what what they call that colour in their range and I would find out what I need like what peroxide I need and what tube of colour and then I would tone my hair properly I just don't think I have just never seen it go well basically but yeah those are all of the things that I would personally never do as a hairdresser I hope that you found them helpful. If you are interested in more hair related content, then check out my channel because I've got a lot more stuff on there. I also post a lot more stuff on my TikTok and my Instagram, which are in the description. Um, I don't know if I've spoken about any products today, but if I have, I'll tag them. I don't think I have. I don't know. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.